What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video, and in this video we're going to be breaking down the upcoming or recoming patch 1.11 agent tier list, and we're going to break it all down from S tier all the way down to F tier to tell you what's the most powerful and the least powerful agents in the entire game, as well as put where we think Sky is most likely to go going forward in the new meta, but mastering any of these agents is only a click away. Down below, click the Game Leap link and go to the Game Leap website where we have in-depth advanced agent VOD reviews, tips and tricks, and much, much more. Do yourself a favor and go check it out in the links down below, and I can't wait to see you there. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, we just had the big first strike qualifying tournament, the very first one. So we got a lot of new data about what agents are really powerful and what agents saw almost no play. So this list is going to be primarily based off of those pick rates as well as how much these characters could transfer in your app average competitive game as well so that it's applicable for all of you watching now right off the bat let's talk about the creme de la creme s tier the best of the best clearly dominant agents right now that are either consistently played or they are so powerful that they warp the entire meta around them now kicking it off with the s tier the best agent in the entire game right now with a near maxed out pick rate is none other than omen the longer the game goes on, the more and more people realize just how absolutely busted this agent is. First off, he has smokes that can just transverse around the entire map, which is something that we have reiterated on that power level over and over again, and the fact that it's on a cooldown and not at a static 3 like Brimstone makes it far more flexible for longer games where you really utilize your clock for your abilities. On top of that, paranoia combos are starting to become the default strategy of all pro teams. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you challenged a Sempi main only for there to be like something like a Reyna or a Jet or something like that that challenge you, get a kill, and basically get out of there for free? Well, being able to set up an Omen Paranoia through the wall while your teammates push in basically set them up for a always win scenario where they either 100% guarantee that space and take it from the enemy or catch an enemy that is too overly aggressive off guard and basically get a free kill. So let's see what this character has. He has an ability to make proactive plays with his team. He has a proactive ultimate that allows him to gain information or get a cheeky playoff. He has smokes that are just amazingly powerful, the most powerful smokes in the entire game, all while being a pivotal character in every team composition. Yes, if you're looking for the best character to main right now, and honestly, a character that you should have in every single competitive game, Omen is probably the best pick for you. Now, moving on to the rest of the S tier, we got to talk about the second up in the S tier slot, and that's Breach. Now, Breach is also notably getting a slight buff in patch 1.11, but honestly, he really didn't need it to get S tier, as Breach is freaking powerful, and his pick rate reflects that. We talked about paranoia combos with Omen Paranoia setting it up for his team, but Breach can do that over and over and over again with Concussion and, of course, the Flashes. In fact, Breach's uptick in pick rate is actually severely hurting Sova, who was once the 100% pick rate god of the entire pro scene now has faltered primarily because of his initiator partner in Breach. Now that being said, if you really want to tap into the power level of Breach and you want to climb in your games, I would highly suggest at least duo queuing because having a lot of these setups are very, very difficult with just randoms and a lot of times it's going to be pretty hard for you to follow up on your own initiation using abilities, but an ally that you're talking to and in constant comms with, especially a duelist duo Duo, that would be absolutely amazing for climbing this competitive patch. Now, for the last character we're going to talk about in the S tier, you know her, you love her, and it's none other than Jet. Now, Jet is still seeing a substantial amount of play, even in a meta where ops aren't used all that much. Now, when they are used, however, it's typically in the hands of a Jet, and honestly, you could abuse the Operator in Ranked with a Jet to get kill after kill and carry a ton of games. On top of that, just at the highest level, Jet is one of those characters that has the highest probability of actually being able to convert on a kill or a play and actually getting out safely. Most of the time at the highest level, it's typically a kill and then a re 
refragged by the enemy team and it's just back and forth where it's uncharacteristic for you to be able to get a free kill on an enemy without the enemy ally trading out that kill but Jen not only gets to do this with her dash and just using regular guns where she gets that numbers advantage but also being the best opera in the game she gets to do this on two different axes and really trying to generate that numbers advantage is one of the best ways to convert close rounds especially when the enemy is not expected to make any overwhelming errors now let's move on to the a tier which are characters that are still fantastic however they have slightly fallen out of the top tier favor they could easily move just out of nowhere based on some changes however right now they are just under the surface of the best agents in the game now the first character that we got to talk about in the top of a tier is none other than sova now sova is still a fantastic agent and honestly playing him in ranked play he can get a ton of value just by himself and he is definitely one of the best agents in the game that being said however there is some big weaknesses that are being apparent with sova right now the first thing is he has a clear map weakness in split where pro players basically don't play sova on split hardly at all because of his inability to get a lot of value with wall bangs different setups and he doesn't have a natural place that he would like to hold and his inability to play more proactive or have the stopping power of something like raise make him not very picked on that specific map a secondary part to this is the typical lmg strategies of old where sobas could really abuse that on both haven and ascent these strategies are working far less as enemies are adapting to them however in your average rain game if enemies don't know how to counter this very well you're going to get a lot of value just abusing these strategies now moving on to the next agent that we got in a tier it's none other than cypher and cypher is notably getting some 1.11 nerfs that really really are going to affect him here and he's already started to fall out of favor as seen in the first strike qualifiers where he basically got outshined by killjoy all over the place now in my opinion the killjoy nerfs are even more severe which i'm going to talk about later but cypher seeing substantial nerfs in the fact that now if he dies his trap wire and his cam both get revealed and disabled means that a cypher has to play far more passive a cypher can't lurk as much this makes cyphers have to play far more passively and honestly play in a much more boring play style that has less potential to carry games and have eye impact honestly i'm not a big fan of these changes but of course the actual decrease in cypher pick rate has only been apparent before these patches were already set in stone so there could be a chance that these get overwritten in some time in the future but for now sentinel in particular are taking a big hit and i do think that cypher will still be in the a tier because after the dust settles he will be the best anti-flank checker on the board because a lot of times when you're playing on attack you still need a consistent anti-flank checker and just having to play passive on defense isn't the worst thing in the world but he did lose his overall oppressive impact and honestly he's relegated to the a tier for the time being but we'll definitely keep an eye on him and see where he moves from here now moving on to the b tier we got to talk about agents that are still very powerful and they see substantial pro play however they're not played in every team composition and they're typically relegated to certain maps and they don't have overwhelming power level but that doesn't mean you can't climb with them in ranked play now the first character at the top of the b tier is none other than raise and raise is a fantastic character especially on certain maps she surprisingly saw some play on ascent even from some of the top teams which really surprised me because that map is so wide open and of course raise has always seen consistent play on both bind and split being able to really dominate enemies that gum up and try to push themselves through tight corridors she could easily punish that and she has extra combo ability with the teleporter on bind raise is definitely an interesting character that i do think there is more space for on a team composition as less sentinels are being played and when you have an initiator like breach where he operates that flash or that pop flash role that you really need to take sidelines you have extra room in your composition to experiment with different characters like raise who don't have a flash but still have incredibly powerful abilities that can be used in different ways in the duelist slot in a team composition now we're going to the next agent that surprisingly has made her way all the way up to the b tier seeing quite a bit of pro play in this tournament is none other than reyna now reyna seems to be getting better every single tournament seeing more and more play and as games get more aggressive because that's what's happening with a lot of these sentinel nerfs i think that reyna is going to start to see more and more play because unlike every other flash in the game reyna doesn't affect her own teammates which is incredibly important 
important. When you make a joint rush play with two or three people, executing that with a Reina Flash can be a way to convert on a free kill with Focus Fire because being able to focus down that enemy and not have to worry about dodging your own flash or timing or routing or anything like that, that really allows for some clean executes and some free kills. Remember, we talked about how important getting that numbers advantage is at all costs. Now moving on to the last character that we got to talk about in this tier list is none other than Phoenix, who still saw a decent amount of play, but not quite as much as he has been in the past, mainly because he's sharing playtime with characters like Breach, Raze, Reyna, Jet, and it's really downing his play by quite a bit. However, it's still apparent that Phoenix is still very powerful, and some players are still flocking to the Phoenix, and I think this really comes down to personal preference, because of course, Phoenix still has the capability to take side control, he still has the diverse range of tools a very powerful ultimate but there's other characters that do different things and it really depends on what the overarching idea or the overarching goal of a team composition or a team strategy is now i do think that phoenix is probably one of the most balanced characters in the game right now and honestly he's an insane character jack of all trades type character that is very good for climbing ranked so if you don't know what to play you pretty much can't go wrong with learning how to master phoenix now moving on to the c tier we got to talk about agents that are going to be good in certain niche scenarios or their power level hasn't quite been tapped into yet now the top of the c tier list is now killjoy and a lot of people are going to be like whoa 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 killjoy basically saw a ton of play in the first strike qualifier tournament but the thing is that was before the Killjoy nurse went through. And for those of you who don't know, now the cooldowns are a lot less on a lot of her abilities. However, specifically with her alarm bot and her turret, if she's too far away from these abilities, they will deactivate and no longer work, which basically fundamentally changes how Killjoy can be played. No longer can she set up on a site and lurk somewhere or go help her team. She has to always be consistently staying with her turret. Otherwise, she risks an enemy lurking up and these abilities don't really gather any information information at all unless she's nearby now conversely cypher did get a big nerf however his abilities still work as long as he's alive even if he's on the other side of the map so if an enemy is harassing in b main and breaks his trap he will still know all the way in a heaven and that is very very important where if a killjoy did the same thing her turret just wouldn't fire at anyone at all and she would get no information now i understand where they're coming from with these big nerfs to sentinels but this one in killjoy is really really brutal and a character that has a kit that is primarily defensive sided and you're neutering one of the best aspects of that I really do think that this drops Killjoy all the way down to C tier However, maybe the fact that they lowered the cooldown on her ability so much give her more playmaking opportunities on attack Or maybe as a character that just brings her stuff with her for a retake I'm not 100% sure on this one if I had to put my wild card stamp on any one agent I would definitely put it on Killjoy, but honestly, I'm pretty sure that she's going to be at least C tier or less after these nerfs if they do indeed go through. Now moving on to the next character in the C tier is none other than Viper, who actually saw quite a bit of an experimental play from TSM and some other teams that really tried Viper specifically on split to see if she was viable. Now results were split to say the least, but Viper really seems like one of those characters that is close to being strong, but is still missing the mark. The biggest problem with Viper is that she can never replace a character like omen because those raw smokes that can smoke off long sight lines and be versatile with the ability to reposition them or put them down multiple times throughout a game viper could never hope to copy that and maybe her primary ability the toxic wall that needs to be able to be picked up and repositioned otherwise i really don't think viper is quite strong enough to see definitive play as a controller specifically now in her current state i could definitely see her as a controller complement some Someone who is played alongside an omen but never instead of and for now she's going to be relocated to c tier where i do think she has potential but honestly she probably needs some more buffs to really eke her up the tier list now last up we got to talk about the f tier characters that saw either very little play or just won't see any play unless they get buffs now the first character in the f tier is actually brimstone which is really really tragic to say the least and it's not because brimstone's a bad agent by any means brimstone 
has fallen out of favor purely because Omen is way too strong. And I'm not saying nerf Omen by any means. No, I think Omen is fine the way he is. But because Omen can do everything, he can set up insanely powerful paranoia team plays. He can smoke. We already went into detail about everything he can do that Brimstone can't. Brimstone is just one of those characters that is like a crutch. He's like a new friendly character. He does the controller or the smoker role on easy mode. However, if you really develop yourself as a player and develop your skills, there's a limit to how much impact you can have on Brimstone, where the impact you could have on Omen is so, so, so much higher. And that's the reason that Brimstone doesn't really see that much play in pro play, but I do think that he's probably fine in ranked play. However, if you really want to improve and better yourself and honestly have more fun, you would probably do yourself a favor and start maining Omen instead, unless Brimstone gets some sizable buffs or changes going forward. Now, the last character on the list, the worst character in the entire game is none other than Sky. No, no, all joking aside, I'm going to tell you where Sky is placed at the end of the video, but the actual dumpster tier character on the list is none other than Sage, and it's just simply because they absolutely destroyed this girl and she's not coming back. I know that there have been developer interviews that they have talked about Sage's win rate and pick rate in competitive play and that she's actually better than she appears. She has a pretty solid win rate in competitive, so they think that she's fine, but from pro pick rate alone, it's clear that Sage is very, very underpowered, and even if she's viable and ranked, she's only bearline viable, and she doesn't feel good to play for anyone who played Sage before she got these gigantic nerfs. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I think if they want to put her in this state, they should just rework the character, change her heal, change her wall, do whatever they need to, make her something completely different if they're just going to keep all of her abilities in this really, really weakened state. But I'm interested in your opinion about all of that in the comments down below. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, where does Sky actually get placed on this competitive tier list based on the information that we learned about the first strike and the gameplay that we saw of Sky before, of course, she even got released and the window that she was actually released in the 1.11 patch before it got reverted. Now the thing about Sky is right off the bat, you play her or you play up against her and you know how powerful she is. Honestly, she seems among the same power level as a character like Breach and realistically, the versatility and the skill ceiling on this character might just make her the de facto infiltrator going forward. And this is incredibly dangerous when we're talking about a character that is rival to someone who is in the S tier on our list. Now, do I think that Sky belongs in the S tier? Honestly, maybe. She might be at the bottom of S tier or the top of A tier, but she definitely seems incredibly strong just with her flash ability alone, but we gotta talk about her ultimate and the fact that she is actually a legitimately powerful healer. Not a healer that's tacked to a character that has weak abilities across the board like Sage right now, but she's a healer that has her abilities attached to an insanely powerful initiator that can do more ability combos with her team. Remember, the name of the game right now is Omen Combos, breach combos and sky really fits in to that paradigm right now and with the big nerfs to sentinels it looks like sky is really primed to be even better and better but here's the thing I want to know what you think about Sky in the comments down below. Do you think she's going to be this really big powerhouse? Or do you think that we're overhyping her a little bit too much? Of course, only time will tell. And when we see her in competitive play in two weeks, we'll know for sure. But mastering any of these agents is super easy. Go to the links down below. Go to the Game Leap website and you'll see in-depth Radiant Tier VOD reviews, in-depth guides, advanced tips and tricks, and much, much more. Do yourself a favor and go check it out in the links down below right now. But thanks so much for coming by. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Milson, of course. Until next time.